All right, good morning. We are uh, going to spend some time this morning digitizing um, the penguin with the tray. This is for the uh, the Mary Poppins um, uh, jacket that matches the Disney Mary Poppins dress. So let me let me show you the dress uh, real quick. So this is the dress, the Mary Poppins dress for women, and it has uh, a lot of details in the bottom of the dress that. Um, we're going to take those details and we're going to pull them off and then embroider them on a men's uh, white jacket to match uh, this dress. So what I've been doing is uh, I have photographs of the details of the dress. Uh, probably could have done a better job on the lighting here, but this is good enough. And I've pulled this into Photoshop. You could use whatever you know photo editor you want. And I'm going to do some really basic uh, cleanup steps here. So first I'm going to use the uh, lasso selection. And I'm just going to cut out the, uh, the penguin. Now if you saw one of my other streams, I did this penguin before, but I didn't like the tool path that I chose. I had gone from Photoshop into Illustrator and then converted to vectors and then gone into Embrilliance. And... It was just too much work, and I actually think it um, it ended up distorting the final image. And as I learned more about Embrilliance with the other penguin, the one with the towel, I realized I didn't need to do that. So I'm going to pull that uh, penguin uh, out into his own layer here, and I'm going to turn off the background. And so now I've got a, a much smaller uh, piece to work with. And then just to make it a little easier... And in Brilliance, um, I'm just going to take the size down here. And really, I could have taken that source image into in Brilliance, but it just has so much uh, other stuff going on. I find it a little easier to get rid of, you know, some of the visual noise of the rest of the pattern. So I'm just going to uh, use the crop tool to take the size of this down. Now, on the on prior versions, I'd even gone in and and tried to select. Um, the fabric color on the outside, and it left me with a lot of uh, jagged edges, especially because this um, because this is a photo of fabric. You're actually seeing a lot of uh, texture on the edges, and it just actually made it made it harder to deal with. I think so. What I'm going to do now is um, is export this uh, at a smaller uh, size. I could just do the the save as JPEG, but the, the export um, will actually uh, let me scale it down at the same time. And this is a really handy uh, feature for when you're exporting graphics for the web or whatnot, so I like to show it. Um, so we're going to take this width way down. We're going to say, let's make that like 800 should, whoop, 800 should be sig significant. And I'm also going to take the yeah, at this size, I think the JPEG uh, quality will be fine, and you'll see it'll it'll take it down to a 376k image. I noticed that in Brilliance got a little weird when I was pulling in large image sizes, um, so I figure let's let's just keep it smaller. And it's going to ask me where I want it, and I'm going to just say penguin tray trimmed, trimmed, and save that JPEG. And now what I can do is actually go over to Embrilliance, and I'm going to start a uh, start a new page. I thought it was interesting they called it a new page, and um, we have a hoop set up here. Let's see which hoop we have. Now I've been working on using a larger hoop uh, because actually. Let me show you the other penguin and kind of what I ended up with. Uh, this is what I ended up with, and uh, this is a hoop that I ended up finding one more hoop uh, at the makerspace that I didn't know I had. Um, it's preferences. Yeah, so this hoop is the 7.75 um, inch uh, round, and you can see that this penguin ends up being, whoops, I want to select all of these areas here. Yeah, so this penguin ends up being, we can see at the bottom, he's uh, 79.5 millimeters tall. And we're gonna wanna do that same thing um, 
with the other with the other penguin. But we can get close, and then we can scale him after we've uh, digitized. So let's just go back over to uh, a new page, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into design mode, and uh, then we're going to click on image. And we're going to pull in uh, penguin tray trimmed. That's the one we just did. We'll give it a second to load the image. Make sure that, ah, yeah, so this button right here also turns on whether or not you can see your, your image uh, preview. And so what I would say is, um, what's interesting is it's not showing me the size of uh, the penguin image here, um, but we're okay with that for right now. We'll get close, and then Imbrilliance does a great job of uh, resizing that later. I'm just going to zoom in so that we can we can see that better. Uh, so now what we need to do is um, digitize this penguin into a series of areas that will be uh, filled. Uh, I'm not an expert by any means, but um, getting better at it. And we've got a couple of options. One is we can take this draw with points. And this draw with points works really well for doing this right here. Where we're just following the natural shape of the penguin. And one of the things that I realized uh, on the last one that I did, and I think I was just obsessing too much at this size over the, the little details. Um, and then I'm probably better off uh, just kind of not worrying about it when I'm so zoomed in, doing it a little faster, and then you know zoom out and do some point corrections later as needed. Because um, I think I was just like in at way too level of high, high or way too low level of a detail, and um, spending way too much time on it. So after I do the, the boundary here with the dots, I click the little, it's actually a circle with an arrow. It's close, open, outline. It looks like a little tomato to me. Uh, and so once that's done, I can then, I'm gonna go click on a fill. This is what I've been using. Uh, I'm gonna go back over to color, and we're gonna change this color to, uh, we're gonna sort by number, which puts black at the top. And we're gonna use a black fill. And previously, I played with some of the settings over here, and then I realized those are the default settings for a reason. And so we went with the defaults, and it looks fantastic. Um, and so there's that area done. Now, why didn't I go down here and do these other areas? Well, what I found was when I extended the fills down into these other areas, I started getting some weird thread lines that went between them, and I felt like it was easier to just do them as sort of separate regions. Um, so now what I'll do is I will um, similarly go up here and I'll do the outline of the face. Now the face details I probably will spend a little more time on um, because they just end up being a little more critical. Now I'm going to pull this eye in at the same time and that's probably a good area where I'm going to want to go back and look at those points. But you see, I'm not going to go do that right side of the face, which is just that line, because I just found that that wasn't working out well to, to do those little those little areas as separate regions. And I'm, I'm assuming that later when I get better at this, I'll, I'll learn how to do stuff like that in, in one shot. But let's go ahead and zoom in. Um, and like I'm going to spend a second cleaning these up, but not a, not a ton. When I did this one the last time, I noticed if I didn't really pull that point down there, it didn't look so great. So we're going to uh, pull these in just a tiny bit. Oops, get over here. And then fill that. And then, uh, yeah, see how, see how I lost the definition on the eye here? So I think what I need to do is pull those back. And now that looks kind of not good, but... Maybe we'll pull this point down here more. You know, that's one of those ones, ah, that looks better, that we're just going to have to maybe even stitch once and just, you know, play with and see how it how it comes out. And while I'm in at this depth, let's go ahead and get the uh, definition here. A 
you can see my trackpad uh, point is not always so great. So let's fill that again. And there are a couple places that I looked off, but you know, let's let's fill it. And the other thing too is because it's got to it's got to fit stitches to it. So sometimes you know you get a little thicker than you mean to. So again, that's why I say let me let me spend some time, you know, just getting the the base pattern in here. And then I'll work on um, cleaning it up in a minute. Okay, now we want to fill that one, but we want that one to be. Ah, oh, and which which color pink was I using? It doesn't really matter here because the um, uh, the thread the thread file that I use for. Um, my machine doesn't take, uh, the machine at, at the Makerspace doesn't take color information. Um, I think we're just gonna use pink here. Uh, it doesn't take color information, which is, which is fine. Um, and so you have to set those colors. And this is interesting because before, when I digitized this, I was actually thinking this center section here was, was white and that was a little bit of color bleed. But now I'm thinking that might actually be the pink. Um, so this is a good example of, they have a magic wand tool, and look, that magic wand tool did a pretty nice job on that curve. So let's just try that and, um, uh, oh, I didn't close it, that's why. Close the rectangle, and let's see what it did. That's not, oh look, it tried to pick a color too. That's pretty trick. Um, I might, I might, but see how, see how jaggy the points ended up being there? I feel like the magic wand's nice, but see, it looks just it looks just jaggy. Let's let's do this. Let's go compare and see if we do the points. And there's probably some presets on the magic wand tool that I could edit to take the jaggies down. Uh, I haven't seen a path smoothing command um, yet, which would be kind of cool. But, all right, okay, and then we want to close that path, and then let's fill it again, and let's go back to color. Uh, we'll just pick that dark rose for a second, and let's look at it. So, I don't know, it's a, it's a more uniform jaggy. <laughs> I don't know that it's, you know, it's really better or worse. Now, here's something I thought of the other day, though, is I probably actually want to do this outer one as a region. If this is going to be, let's just get this out of the way for a second. If this is actually going to be pink, what I probably want to do is digitize the whole thing in one color and then come back over and just lay the pink um, circle on it. So let's do this again, but this time we're going to do the outer now that I'm remembering. What I intended to do and you know these are the little tricks with digitizing that you have to learn like is it better to do separate areas is it better to do you know a thread over another thread um, what's gonna you know what's gonna look better so let's close that let's fill it again let's go back to color we're just gonna use this reddish color here. So that looks, you know, again, uniform jaggy looks kind of round. Now the trick is that we, um, we need to go back to dots. There we go. And what we now need is this really this center line. Um, and what I'm thinking might make sense here is let's do, instead of doing a fill, let's try doing the center of the line with the path. And then let's try maybe like a a column stitch on it instead of trying to fill such a thin area okay let's close it and then let's do a column stitch oh is that still a fill hang on column stitch now that width is way wide so let's see what happens if we do a one millimeter 
width. Is that a thing? Yeah. Um, now, what we really want though is we want that we want it to be the same color we had here, which is this 1116 pink. Again, it doesn't really matter, it's just for my, my view here. So, you know, that's that's kind of interesting. That's that's a column stitch. Um, do I have other options here? If I turn off the column stitch, what is this? This is just stitch a line, and I could do a double. I think that actually looks way better. I don't know if there's a way to, I don't know, is there a way to, to fatten that up a little bit, maybe? Double a bean? What's a bean? I don't know. Uh, Backstitch stem a shishiko. Ooh, what's that? No, that's definitely not what we want. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to experiment and see see what looks good. That's a bean. Either way, I think we're getting the right kind of idea here. Ooh, backstitch. What is that? Actually, that looks kind of cool. Yeah, let's go with that. Hmm, we're learning. And then later, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll optimize these by putting the colors together um, so that... Um, we don't have as many um, we don't have as many lines uh, we don't have as many color changes here but now you'll see that I this would actually need to come first right uh, wait am I thinking about this backwards hang on where's my whoops what did I do uh... See, I had everything going well, and then I got all weird. Okay, so it has to come after. So we'll move both of those fills after. Yep, that's what I was trying to get to. Okay, so uh, okay, while we're here, let's go ahead and we'll um, we'll pull the bow tie in. Now I haven't been doing it yet, but one of the things I did on the other penguin. Oh, by the way, I'm going to use I think it was option control maybe to do a straight line on that part of the bow tie uh, because that is really kind of a defining feature of the the bow tie shape is that very straight line right there this has a subtle curve straight line subtle curve 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 one of the other benefits of digitizing these areas separately is that we can actually change the the fill style or the pattern. So like for example, um, I think, I'm gonna move this inclination line, I think on the bow tie, we did the inclination vertical um, just to give it a different uh, look and texture. Whereas on the, um, on the rest of the penguin, I believe we were uh, horizontal. And just, just again, to give it a little bit of a, of a different feel. Now, I have not saved my file yet. <laughs> I should do that. All right. Uh, so this is going to be. I'd previously created penguin tray, so this is going to be penguin tray v uh, v five. Save because I didn't like the one I did before, so we're redoing this one. Um, and I think it's going to look much better now that I've learned more about how to do this. So, Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, we're missing uh, this line here. We're missing this line here. Oh, we're missing an eye. Let's go ahead and get the, the other eye done with here. I want a lot of points around that eye to get some definition. Close that, fill that, and we're done there, okay? Similarly, let's go grab this side of the face. Uh, close. 
fill that. Again, that horizontal inclination. That feels a little, hmm, uh, feels a little straight, but maybe, I don't know, maybe that's how it was. Well, we'll have to look at it later. We'll look at the, oh, you know what? I can just, uh, I'll double check in Photoshop. No, it looks pretty straight. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's go get this element here. Nice subtle curve here. And I think what we'll do is we will um, just kind of come here. Close it, fill it, okay. Okay, close it, fill it the same way. Looking good. So this process is just tedious, right? And I feel like if I'd had cleaner art to begin with, I could have used more of their auto selection tools. But the more I played with them, uh, it just felt like this uh, process was the um, the most effective. I watched a few videos. There's some other methods and tools you can use, um, but this is this was just working, and so I have been sticking with it. Okay, there's the top. Let's go ahead and save again. Has the brilliance has the weirdest panning. You hit spacebar and then select and shift. It's kind of weird that way, but it's all good. All right, let's go back into design. More points. Close. You can see kind of I should have added another point here, I think, and move that in a little bit. There we go, that looks better. Um, and then fill that. Okay. And then we're going to do this piece as a section. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, I need to have this done by uh, by the weekend, and um, have been a little busy this week. <laughs> so um, I didn't. I've been trying to get back in the gym lately, and um, I worked out yesterday, so that gave me a little bit of discretionary time early this morning. So we're sitting here digitizing. Poof. And uh, see, the last one I did, I would have been obsessing more on like the smooth on this curve here. And like I said, I'm, I think I'm gonna, just going to go a little faster today and go, hey, I think that's, I think that's good enough, right? It, it doesn't need to be, um, doesn't need to be perfect. People aren't going to have this in there. It's not like a patch where they're going to have it in their hand and they're going to really be, you know, looking at it. Um, so I got to learn when. Something's good enough here. Now I'm gonna try with this one to go do this whole compound shape up to this point here and hope that the lines work out well. So far I've been good.
So the first time I digitized this penguin, it took me two and a half hours, and I didn't like the outcome. So uh, we are 25 minutes into this one, and I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy. So hopefully we can continue and not have any big issues. And then um, I'll be at the space tonight. We're uh, doing a marketing meetup and uh, recording a podcast. Uh, I'm hoping like somewhere in between there I can throw this guy to the embroidery machine. And just make sure it's happy. Oh, see, there's one of those lines. Now, let's zoom in. One of the things I learned about these lines, kind of accidentally, was that playing with the inclination can help. See, that didn't help at all, did it? Actually made it worse. And I really wish I knew how to fix these all together. Okay, if I bring the inclination line down here, can I, yeah, it doesn't want to do that. Or maybe I can add another inclination line. How do you do that? I think that's this. Add a second inclination line. Ah. Well, oh, oops, didn't mean to draw that point. Delete. Hey, that seemed to work. Um, now it's a little, it's a little jarring because this transition here, I'm not super crazy that the inclination is so different. Um, but again, at its size, I, I just don't think I can worry about it that much. Um, I may just need to clean up that. Uh, oh, that's weird. Why is it? See how jaggy that looks compared to the rest? Uh, it's the same pattern. Yeah, it may just be because it's not a it's not an area. It's just looking extra jaggy there. Let's see if we change the inclination on this guy. Does that? Yeah. See how that cleaned up that jaggy quite a bit. I might need to play with this one a little bit and see if I can get it to where it's just happier. That's better. Okay, so in other words, need to learn to tweak those inclinations just a bit. That also feels, this feels a little like it juts out here. Um, but the original in Photoshop had a little bit of an angle there too, so... I think we're okay. All right, we're gonna hit save. And we're gonna do the feet. So these are a little harder to see um, because of that color, that really light pink color on the fabric. One of the things that I didn't like in the previous version that I digitized is I lost a lot of definition in these black lines on the feet through the you know editing and vectorizing to the point it really wasn't recognizable when you when you got to the final piece and that was part of what made me realize I need to uh, need to redo it so all right which pink did we use we used one 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 six. Again, it doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to use the same thing. Okay, and then we need to do this other in the same. These guys are so cute. I love penguins. And I just needed a good excuse to learn this software, right? Another accidental project. Didn't didn't intend to get into this and and do this this week, but it's for a good reason. And so, hey, why not? Okay, so now let's go back to digitize. And we're gonna do these areas here. Um. 
close. These are another one where I filled them on the other penguin, and I feel like they came out just a little weird, but we'll we'll see. Um, hmm, where did my new region go? Uh, that's this. Yep, we need to do that after we do those. Yeah, okay, that looks great, actually. All right, super happy with that. Yay, I can learn. Oh, don't like that point. By the way, it's delete if you get a point you don't like. Don't make the mistake like I do and hit control Z. Because that will actually undo the last operation you did, not the last point select. And uh, that gets a little frustrating when suddenly the last the last region that you digitized is, uh, is now gone. All right, you, you're supposed to be uh, 1,000. Okay, see I feel like on this one, I didn't go far enough down on the, see this? So I need to just uh, pull this point here down a little bit. Oh, the other thing I could do is I could just scale the whole thing. But All right, I'm just gonna nudge the whole, whoops, my bad. I'm gonna nudge the whole piece just down a little bit. I think that's ah, a little bit more. I think it still has integrity. Yeah, see that's a good example of where good enough, right? It's it's not a hundred percent true to the original now, but who cares? Get over it. All right, get close and be done, Ian. And I'm going to go just go ahead and draw my next one and I'll change the color of them together. Okay, so we'll take these last two fills, and we'll select them, we'll say 1000, and that's black. And they, uh, this one, same thing. I think I want to just nudge it just a little bit down. Same thing here. See that last point doesn't kind of come down far enough. Okay. Oh, those look good. He looks good. I like the way that this tray turned out too. That looks, um, that looks great. Now we'll turn our image off. And there, boys and girls, is our penguin. And we went from two and a half hours down to 33 minutes. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely better. So file, let's go ahead and save as. We're going to save, we'll save a new V6. Uh, and then if you remember, the other penguin, uh, I should have written it down, I think was right around... Um, uh, 80 millimeters tall. I think it was like 79.5 millimeters tall. So we're going to do the same thing with him. We're going to scale him to be right at 79.3 eh, millimeters tall. And then we're going to say uh, utility center and hoop to get him centered. Now, um, the thing I need to look at with the other penguin is I'm not sure if I technically want him centered in the hoop or if I want like the center line of his body in the hoop. So I'm gonna have to think about that, uh, but I'm gonna hit save for right now. And then what I'll do is I'll do a test run of just him. And then after that, I will, um, I'll put the border, I'll put him back in with the border and, uh, and do that all as one run. Now, let's also look, see I've got my pinks separated again here. Um, so what I probably want to do is bring these two pinks way down here and do them all at the same time as that. And that still looks correct. We'll do all our pink together. And then um, uh, let's do the tray 
Let's get all of our black together. We'll do the tray before our pinks. And so now what this should leave us is, um, we're gonna do, see I wanna do his body. I don't wanna just, well, no, actually I could do the, I could do all the pinks first. That wouldn't be bad. Uh, no, because I need to do the reds first. Okay, so let's take all the blacks here and we'll move that, or we'll just take all of these and move them to the top. And so we'll start with the tray. We'll then do our detail on the tray. We'll do our pinks and then we'll come back in and do our blacks. Um, yeah, that's great. File, save again. So there's our penguin. And uh, let's look at him a little closer. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let's, check our, let's check our fill inclination on this tray. Um, that fill pattern. Because the penguin is filled at that direction, and I kind of want to try filling the tray like that angle. Yeah, see how that, that changes that pattern inside quite a bit? We also, we have a bunch of options for the, for the fill. Um, it could be neat to try, like that's a basket, so you get some other, see how you get some different texture in there? Let's zoom in a little more. You know, and, and this is the stuff that's like super minor detail, but I think when you look at pro embroidery, it makes like a really cool, like that pattern's too big for me. But it, it makes like a really big um, difference when they do those little things. Wicker probably makes a lot of sense for that tray. Although I'm not crazy about the edging now. I know I could sit here and debate this all day long. Uh, let's get brick. No. None. No. <laughs> uh, tatami is kind of the default that I use, which isn't bad. Scales, no, definitely not. Cornrow on a tray. Diamond, mm, the diamond looks kind of cool. Yeah, just for a little different, you know, texture. Might you might think that maybe that's like a crystal tray or something. I don't know. All right, let's just save that and we'll get done screwing around. All right, well, there's our there's our penguin, and uh, just to just to compare, let's uh, let's look at it in Photoshop. And then here he is. Actually, let's just zoom out just a little bit more here. One step out. Here's our penguin. Here he is in Photoshop. Let's see if I can make that work side by side. And uh, I think he looks. I think he looks pretty good. So he's a happy little penguin. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day. This is uh, Imbrilliance uh, software for digitizing, and uh, we will. The next step will be to actually try it on our uh, Barodan embroidery machine uh, at MakerFX. So, see you in the next stream.